So recently, I had the chance to play Ghost Recon Wildlands at Ubisoft San Francisco for just about 5 hours. As usual, I always like to give my input on these games before they release, so think of this as a first impressions kind of video. Now this time, I'm going to be going over the positives, the negatives, and the averages. I don't really know, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you want to see more Ghost Recon, let me know in the comments down below. And without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so going into this event, I really wasn't that excited or hyped. I've honestly never really been a fan of the Ghost Recon series, and I'm kind of thankful in that regard because I didn't end up comparing it to other games in the series the whole time, so I didn't have any crazy high expectations. I just went in with an open mind as it's a new story, and it's also the first open world game in the franchise. So let's start with the positives. Right off the bat, I have to compliment how much customization there actually is in this game. I honestly think this has the most customization than any other Ubisoft game. You can choose if you want to be a male or a female, different face options, eye colors. You can also change your hair, hair color, and facial details which is scars, burns, and things of that nature. But that's not all, you can customize different face paint tattoos, glasses, headwear, and backpacks. I'm honestly not kidding when I say there is a ton of customization. And not just character customization, but there's also gun customization where you can add different scopes, barrels, change it from an automatic to a semi-automatic, and even add skins. I was just so happy to see that there are so many customization options right away, and thankfully they didn't hide a lot of things behind DLC. Another positive thing is the amount of vehicles in this game. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first open world Ubisoft game where you can pilot a helicopter or a plane. Now, I will admit the controls for flying and just the overall mechanics aren't the best and they take some time to get used to, but oh my god, it's so nice to just jump out of a helicopter and see the world around you. Ubisoft have confirmed that there's over 60 different vehicles in this game. For comparison, Watch Dogs 2 has around 60 as well, so it's pretty insane to see that much variety when this game is basically in the desert. So here is where Ubisoft impressed me the most, and that is the co-op. You can play the entire single player campaign with a group of 4 people. How amazing is that? I mean, I don't have 3 other friends, but if I did, I would love this feature. No, but seriously, it's just super nice to see this feature, especially in an open world game. And by the way, if you haven't seen it already, I uploaded a funny moments video earlier today, and you can just see how much fun the co-op in this game actually is. I literally was playing with three people I've never met before, and we had some funny, funny moments. For me personally, co-op is the main selling point of this game. It's just a lot of fun to explore this world with friends or even strangers. It's Ubisoft's biggest open world game, so there will be lots of exploring to do. Now with my positives out of the way, it's time to talk about the things that were just kind of average. They weren't amazing, but they also weren't terrible. Starting things off with this list is the graphics. At times, the game just doesn't look that good. And don't get me wrong, I don't think the game was downgraded, it's just that it looks a lot better during certain times of the day. With that said, you'll notice some low quality textures here and there, but I don't think it ruins the experience. Another thing that was just average was the gunplay. I used a sniper for most of the time, but I did use an assault rifle and a shotgun, and nothing was really satisfying about them. To be fair, I don't know if that's because I was playing on the average difficulty, maybe if I put it on hard or realistic it would have felt a bit more satisfying, but as of now, I really wasn't blown away by any specific weapon. And last but not least, on the average list, we had the story. So I only played about 2 hours of the single player campaign, and it just wasn't that impressive. At least from what I played, it's your typical drug cartel story. It's been done a thousand times before, but again, I only played two hours of it, so maybe it'll be a bit more different, but I honestly doubt it. But the really annoying thing about the story, at least for me, is that your character is never mentioned by name. I understand why that is, because you can customize your character, it can be a male or a female, but wow, it just drags you out of the story when they always refer to you as soldier or they say, what are you doing? You know, things like that instead of using an actual name. That may be a really small complaint for some people, but it really bothered me. Now onto my main issues with the game, we have the AI. 
at times these people are really smart. I honestly died a couple times on normal, but then other times it's like they're blind and deaf. I mean, just look at this clip. Oh, you're stealing the car. Okay, good job. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna not do that then. So. I don't think they know. What? What? Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> You just stole the truck right in front of them, and they didn't react. So yeah, those specific enemies weren't the smartest kids on the block, but to be fair, we weren't really either. Another issue I had with the game is the night time, which may sound stupid, but hear me out. Right when I launched the game, I turned the gamma up to 60%, and I still couldn't see anything at night. And yes, I know you have night vision goggles, I used it in the clip you just saw, but sometimes I just want to enjoy the nighttime without seeing green every single time. And I don't know what it is, but even when I edit these clips now, and turning up the brightness another 30%, it's still not that good. So I'm just letting you all know now, you might need to turn up the gamma and brightness when the game launches, but hopefully they can fix this. Onto my biggest gripe with the game, the main missions and side activities. Go here, kill this person. Go here, interrogate this person. Go here, steal this plane. Now again, I'm sure there will be standout missions, but from the one mission I played, that was basically it. You just go to a spot on the map, kill people, and that's it. And I get it, it's an open world shooter, I really do. But as I mentioned, the story to me was just average, so doing this felt like a chore because I wasn't invested. I don't know if this is because I was just thrown into the game or not, but again, the side missions will have you doing the same things. And awesome, you get guns, you get upgrades, but after a while, it will just start to feel like a grind. Overall, my first impressions for this game is, it's just average. I think if you were to play the entire game with your best friends, Wildlands would be a completely different experience, and for the better. However, if you want to play by yourself, I don't think the game will be nearly as fun or exciting. Like I said earlier, co-op is one of the main selling points of this game. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do want to mention things are subject to change, and I only got a glimpse of the entire game, so it's definitely possible that the game is a lot better, or even worse, I really don't know. But if you're on the fence about this game, I would say wait until the reviews are out, and then make up your mind. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you want to see more Ghost Recon, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you all later.